Welcome into the MVFC First and Gold podcast. I'm Kelly Burke, and we are wrapping up fall football camp and transitioning, hard to believe, into week one of college football season. And we're so pleased to be joined by the new Western Illinois head football coach, Myers Hendrickson. Coach, uh, how are you and how anxious are you to get going here first game of the season? Hi, Kelly. First off, yeah, thanks for having me. Really excited to be on today. Awesome. And we, we had a great fall camp. Uh, I felt like our team really came closer together. Uh, really thankful for the leadership. Dr. Wong, our president, director of athletics, Paul Bubb, did a great job putting our, our team in position to have a great fall camp. Uh, really, we set out um, to, to bring the team closer together. And I think we got that accomplished. You know, our team was um, three meals a day, uh, all under one roof, Corbin Olson dorm. And, um, you know, I, I felt like we took a lot of positive strides. Uh, we really want to create momentum in our program, generate small wins, you know, build on that momentum. And, and I think we've done that up to this point. Now we start school and, uh, you know, with school starting this last Monday, you know, now it's, uh, you know, our, our, our attention is, you know, on the student athlete, making sure that they're, they're getting everything they need for classes, um, getting where they need to be. So they're set up and, and good to go. And uh, I think that we've had a really good transition into, into the school year. Myers, you, you grew up in Macomb as a coach's kid. At Western, you were a business major with an emphasis on supply chain management. So at, at what point did the career path become the business of coaching? Well, I knew I always wanted to be around the game. So I played the game as long as I could. And then when I couldn't continue to play, you know, I knew I wanted to get into coaching. But I had a great uh, experience here at Western Illinois University. And I uh, want to give that great experience back to, to future Leathernecks. Um, you know, you mentioned a business major. I've got my degree here hanging on the wall in my office. Uh, I've got a football sign here by Bob Nardelli, who just came back and spoke at graduation here this spring. And um, Bob's someone that came and talked to the team when when I was a player and uh, really looked up to him. You know, he was a CEO of Home Depot and really put them on the map um, in addition to, to GM um where you see oh just had a remarkable career you still see him um, um speaking uh you know the national business leader um recognized uh, really worldwide as, as a business leader and so having him back on campus um and getting to spend some time with him was just um you know good just uh to, to feel that again that you know this this, this person that's done so much in, in the business world all he wanted to talk to me about was leatherneck football so <laughs> nice. that was that was pretty special but um, yeah, growing up around the game, you know, I was fortunate to, to grow up around the game. My dad uh, being a college football coach at, um, you know, at University of Iowa in the 90s where I grew up and moving over to Macomb, Illinois here at Western Illinois University. And, um, you know, I was fortunate to, to wear the purple and gold myself and, and be a Leatherneck. I really enjoyed my time as a, as a student athlete and excited to give back. In a few sentences, how would you describe your coaching philosophy? Oh, complete student athlete development. I mean, that's really what we're all about. We really want to develop our players professionally, academically, socially, um, spiritually, if they'd like to be developed in that area as well. So I think, you know, we, we really want the complete total student athlete experience. We've got the leadership here to do it with our president, Dr. Wong, and, and director of athletics, Paul Bubb. I feel great about the, the future of our university, um, where we're going. Uh, I think, you know, football is really just a microcosm of uh, what we can teach, you know, these individuals for life after football. And so, you know, what I can do in our real world Wednesdays in the off season, um, you know, what we can do for servant leadership, what we can do in the way of community service to me, you know, means so much more to me than, uh, you know, what we're going to do on the field. Um, I think we can accomplish a lot of special things in all areas of our program, but, you know, we want total student athlete development here. Uh, I think we're growing in a lot of ways, you know, as, Talked to a lot of my former players, you know, at Kansas Wesleyan and other stops along the way. And it's amazing, you know, the, the, the relationships you have, you know, the, the, that piece of it, you know, you talk a lot more about that than the wins and losses. You know, I was talking about my former quarterbacks last night on the phone. And, uh, you know, you talk more about, you know, how their family is and, and how they're doing individually than, you know, remembering the, the football side of things. So, um, you know, that, that's really my philosophy as a coach. You know, it's relationship-based and, and really developing our players. Um, in all areas of life. And, and we can certainly do that, you know, here at Western Illinois University. And I feel like we had a really good, good winter and good spring in that department. I think that was really important. Um, you know, I got here in December, you know, we broke the team up into our Hanson Hero teams. 
and named those teams after former Leathernecks. We call them legendary Leathernecks that played in the NFL. Um, but the point system was based on community service hours, academics, you know, some some physical components like weight room competitions. But you only get 15 springs, 15 practices in the spring semester uh, in college football. So you got to find ways to develop your program outside of football. And we're going to compete in everything we do. Yeah. And uh, so that was that was a big piece of that was developing our program and uh, in the, those eight team building off season teams. And we just got such a rich tradition here at West Illinois that we named those teams after after those uh, legendary Leathernecks. And, and the first thing we actually charged them with to kind of build in our tradition some more here in our program is that they had to give a PowerPoint presentation on their Leatherneck. And so it was really cool. Some of them even were able to get on the phone with their, their player. And, oh, really? And, wow. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and find some things out, you know, about, about these players and, and do PowerPoint presentations on them. It was a good experience for our players. But, you know, we want to put them in position to be leaders. And, and that, a lot of that happens off the field, too. Yeah, I, I love that. that. That's one of the things that's really impressed me in, in your first eight months is all the stuff you guys are doing to build that culture, especially off the field. And uh, you, you mentioned the Hanson Heroes and, and you actually had a Hanson Heroes event in the spring. So what were some of the highlights uh, of those projects that each team decided to do? Oh, uh, I mean, one of the highlights would have been uh, on the Hanson Hero Day, all eight teams, we had locations throughout the community and went out and did community service projects um throughout you know what probably the highlight was being with the mayor downtown the mayor mccomb uh was downtown got to see one of our teams picking up uh cleaning up um downtown mccomb and um just just reaching out to different groups um in in, in uh community you know different parts of the community in mccomb i think was a really neat highlight of it connecting our players with the community um you know we want the stands full here at hanson field you know and that's that's a big thing that we want to get done i think you know, to do that, we want to continue to strengthen that, you know, relationship between Macomb and, and West Rome University and felt like that's something we got done at, at Kansas Wesleyan. And, you know, I think that's um, why we had some good attendance there. It wasn't just because we were winning football games, but our players were present in the community. Um, we, we got out in the elementary schools a lot. You know, I think, you know, we were at Edison Elementary multiple times and, and just seeing our players interact with that youth. Um, was was really special and I think if they had as good of a time as we did on most of those days it was a good day and from the reports I got I think they did um, so I think it was that was productive for us. You touched a little bit on, on the spiritual side of things when you accepted the western job in December how full circle of a, a moment was that for you especially as someone who grew up in in this community for a lot of your life? Yeah, in coaching, you never know where you're going to be. You know, I was focused on, you know, what we were doing. I thought, you know, what we were building in Salina, Kansas was pretty special. So <clears throat> a full circle piece of it probably is that, um, you know, an alum and, and one of my former coaches and, and mentors, you know, was one of the first people that reached out to me uh, about the position. Uh, Frisman Jackson uh, was my position coach here. We had Team Jackson. And, uh, you know, for Hanson Heroes, I've had him on. He's Zoomed with our team here. He's the receivers coach for Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. With Mike Tomlin, and he just Zoomed our zoomed in on a team meeting and had a PowerPoint awesome. presentation for our team. But, uh, yeah, with, with Frizz reaching out to me and, and some of the other alums reaching out, um, as an alum, I was honored about that. But I think we were at a point in the program, whether it was me or somebody else, just having an alum back here was going to be important. Mm -hmm. Um you know, I think, you know, we, we were in the second round of the playoffs, you know, at, at Kansas Wesley and just trying to focus on, you know, that game and, and just keep moving that program forward and win as many games we could. And um, when the opportunity presented itself, you know, I felt like it was something I, you know, it was a no brainer, something I couldn't, couldn't pass up to come back and, and lead the Leathernecks and someplace you've uh, put a lot of sweat equity. You know, I, I'm a believer in sweat equity, you know, a lot of really, um, you know, blood and sweat into a place. You have a chance to come back and lead it. Um, that first night I got here, it was a Friday night, December 17th. Um, uh, we, we Zoomed with the team, which was really awesome. You know, I wasn't able to see them in person, but just Zooming with the team. You feel an instant connection if you're a Leatherneck, you know. <laughs> just being a Leatherneck is, is special. It's it's different than than any anybody else. I mean, literally, we're the only school in the country that's allowed to use a military term. 
um, outside of the, the uh, military academies. Uh, so we have that connection that nobody else can have unless you're a Leatherneck. So I think we connect on that level. And then that night, you know, I went in the locker room, you know, locker room, it's, <clears throat> it's a, it's a sacred place, place where you spend a lot of time and um, you go in there, you remember right where your locker was different lockers, you know, we got new lockers here at Western Illinois, but um, I think that's a piece of it too. Just um, having that pride in the place that, again, that you build some sweat equity was, was big for me. So that was a big part coming back. You mentioned Frizen Jackson, how valuable of a mentor has he been in your life? Not just, you know, since you've taken over this job, but he's been every pretty much step of the way of your career from the time you graduated Western. Yes. Yeah, Kelly. So, I mean, just going back, I guess, you know, I really didn't have any experience around NFL organizations at all, which, you know, as my dad was a college football coach, so I was fortunate to be around Georgia Tech, Iowa, Western Illinois, um, probably around 2016, 2017, Frizz took the um, receiver's job at Tennessee Titans and invited me in. That was really special. I was at offense coordinator at Co College at the time. Got to go spend time around the Titans and be around his family. And um, just to, to, to be able to take that in was was a great experience. And then, um, of course, most recently, Frizz has been with Matt Rule, uh, Baylor, and, and, um, and then over in Carolina Panthers was his past game coordinator. And now he's up at uh, in, in Pittsburgh. So, um, he's been huge for me, um, not just from a football standpoint, uh, professionally. I mean, again, just being around those NFL organizations and the information he's been able to share with me in that regard has been huge. And then just coaching ball, you know, like whether it's coaching quarterbacks or receivers, you know, I still speak that same language that, you know, we talked a lot, you know, as far as from a football standpoint too. So it's been huge in every aspect of my career. When you're taking over a football program, especially, you know, Western, they, they haven't won a lot of games as of late. You, you alluded to this a little bit, just fostering competition. Uh, and, and that's kind of, it sounds like where the Hanson heroes stems from a little bit, as, as well as the history and tradition piece you talked about. But what's the first thing when you're taking over and trying to rebuild a program, the first thing you have to really do as a coach to shift the culture and the mindset? Well, I think it's it's more non-football based. Um, I think it's it's exactly what you just said, Kelly. It's a mindset. And so we talk about here's pound the rock every single day. We want to show up and work. And you may swing a thousand times and not have a mark, a scratch, you know, not a dent on that rock after a thousand swings. But that thousand first swing may be the big breakthrough. And so I think when we have that mentality in the classroom, in the weight room, you know, and, and professionally, you know, when you're trying to get that that job or that internship, whatever it may be, it's not results oriented, it's process oriented. That's what we're, we're becoming here at Western Illinois, which I think has is, is helped our approach. You know, you can really only control your approach. You know, we can't really control the result all the time. I think we have that work like approach every single day that's going to going to help us get the PR in the weight room and help us get the A on the test. It's going to help us win the football game, you know, all those pieces of it. But, you know, people ask, you know, how you win some of those games, Kansas Wesley and some, you know, some come from behind wins are big wins and it's simple. We pound the rock and you win the game really. Um, Kelly, the way I look at it is Sunday through Friday, you know, if it, the game's on Saturday, we're looking at Sunday through Friday and, and uh, what you can do to prepare the game. Ha- the game takes place, you know, the game's going to happen and, whatever happens happens but I think we can really uh pound the rock all week and and then make some some special things happen we we don't know when the breakthrough is going to happen you just keep working every single day yeah yeah no that makes sense all about the consistency and like you said the the work when you get to game day the work so to say is done like at that point you know you've been preparing all week so um your dad Mark how has he been instrumental um, and how does he continue to be instrumental in your coaching career? And I know he's not officially on the staff, but he, you know, he's sort of unofficially a huge part of the Western program. Absolutely. Well, he was with me, Kelly, every step of the way at Kansas Wesley. And so, you know, I accepted that position in 2019. Uh, he went, he went there with me and uh, my mom, you know, moved over to Salina, Kansas with my dad and, and they were in there and dad and I shared an office every day for three years, <coughs> excuse me. And so, just having that piece, uh, those first three years as a head coach, um, you know, first year was great because we were able to get a year in, you know, before the the pandemic, before COVID. But I learned so much about being a head, being a head coach and 
um, being still heavily involved in the football side of things. I'm not a CEO head coach, um, I'm coaching ball every day, um, you know, and, and really involved in all aspects of the program. So being able to bounce things off of him, having him there, like I said, sharing an office with me every single day, his special teams background has been really big for me, um, you know, as a, as a head coach too, and, and what he brings to the table offensively in special teams. But yeah, I think we owe a lot of our success at Kansas Wesleyan to him. And then, um, you know, again, just having them there with me every step of the way is as a, especially again, a few years ago as, as a really young head coach, first time doing it, really needed, needed the help and experience and wisdom that he was able to give us at Kansas Wesleyan. And um, he's back in Macomb now and, and helping move us forward here at Western Illinois as well. Awesome. When, on the rare times when you guys do have maybe a difference of opinion or approach on something what does that look like between you two because obviously you know your father's son too yeah I, that's a good question I mean we're just we're really spent a lot of time you know watching film together and on the whiteboard you know chalkboard you know whatever we're doing watching football and so you know especially in season he may see something a certain way or see something a different way um, or you know a different you know approach the way you could um, you know pace the possibly take advantage of something uh, for a defensive look, um, you know, or a special teams look or whatever it may be that, you know, football is football. I mean, that, you know, people talk about this, you know, whatever this new age and future of football is, but a lot of the plays that, you know, people have been running for a hundred years is still a good play. So I think just seeing, seeing the game um, from all different angles, you know, and, and my dad's actually, he's a big trick play guy too. So I can't oh, nice. a lot of our, our tricks were, from ones that he had drawn up so cool. he, yeah just because he's a you know a coached um you know more veteran coach he still had um you know a lot to from the from the trick play standpoint to offer for us but uh yeah we're just we to, as far as a disagreement goes I mean we we don't really have a, a whole lot it's more like you know there's a certain way to do things that'd be better than the way I'm than the way I'm doing it I'm open for suggestions whether it's my father or anybody on staff just yeah um you know we're really a group effort here at Western yeah, well, I'll be I'll be looking forward to those trick plays this season. I know Jason Eck was kind of the the guru at South Dakota State that was known for those, and he left for Idaho. So we need somebody else to kind of fill those shoes this year. Coach Eck. So funny story. I we got to go out and see Coach Eck this summer. So oh, summer. really nice. Yeah. Well, Coach Eck was on my dad's staff here at Western. Oh, okay. Um, I didn't realize awesome. that. Yeah. So he was his offensive line coach. After I graduated, okay. um, he was, Coach Eck was here um, with my dad as his offensive line coach. And so uh, Coach Eck's been somebody I've always picked his brain everywhere I've been to. And, uh, you know, he's out of Idaho now as a head coach. And so my sister's in grad school uh, in, in Spokane, um, okay. Washington, which is right across the aisle there, right across the street from um, Moscow. So we went and got to, got to see him there. But yeah, he's going to do big things at Idaho for sure. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I've got to know him pretty well, and then his wife Kimberly became, uh, you know, pretty good friends with her during during their time in the valley. So obviously, hate to see them hate to see them leave the valley, but I was really excited he got a head coaching shot up there. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited for for the X as well. Yeah, Myers. When it comes to recruiting, you talked about how process driven you are, and so what's an example of, of what that process sort of looks like when you're in out recruiting somebody? Well, you know, if you looked at who we signed in, in, in my first class here, Kelly, it was a lot of high school players early in the process. So we really want to win in this tri-state region, you know, um, we're in Western Illinois, you know, so you got Missouri, Iowa, Chicago, Lance, huge forest, but, you know, Illinois, Missouri, Iowa, we want to, we want to win in that area recruiting wise. And then from an individual standpoint, getting to know their families, you know, if we can get them here on an official visit, they'll sit in my office and, you know, we'll ask them, I'll ask them, you know, do you plan to graduate from where you go to school, which sounds, you know, like obvious, right? But now, right now at the transfer portal, you know, we really want to try to retain, retain student athletes, you know, at a high level. And I think that's big that, you know, that that mom, dad, whoever's in, in part of that decision you know, that they're going to have your back too with you when, you know, that first semester away from home is tough for anybody, you know, and so uh, we want everybody on board. We want everybody to be a leather neck. And if they're going to show up and pound the rock every day, you know, be serious about their academics. Uh, means a little bit more to me that they graduate from Western Illinois just because I am a graduate. You know, I think 
as a head coach, Kansas Wesleyan, or wherever you were as a head coach, you want to treat that place like it is where you graduated from. And, and you know, it, it's that, that degree, that diploma is everything. That needs to be the most important thing, in my opinion, for college athletics. So it comes pretty organically and naturally that, you know, with me graduating from Western, that it's personal to me that I want to find that meaningful degree. Uh, so I'll, I'll speak pretty highly on supply chain management. You know, somebody wants to talk about business, you know, I'm going to talk about Bob Nardelli. I'm going, to, I'm going to talk about supply chain management. I think it's, you know, that's that shows, I think, kind of where we're at, you know, try where we're moving as a program that, you know, we want that that total student athlete development. And, and that's how we talk about that process driven recruiting. Yeah. Uh, you were obviously a receiver at Western Illinois for three years. What what do you, in your opinion, think makes a, a great receiver elite? What are some well, of the intangibles? Being a complete player, you know, I think you at, at the receiver position, you've got to be a great blocker. You've got to be detail oriented. It's probably the most dependent position in all of sports because teammates got to block, the offense line's got to block for you if it's a pass play. You know, you've got to run the right route and you've got to get open, but then the quarterback's got to get to you in his read. Maybe the coverage dictates if you get the ball or not. So there's so many things out of your control. For, so for a receiver, I'm looking for somebody that's just going to show up and do their job every single day and not worry about their stat line because again, it's, it's dependent on some things out of your control if you catch a ball or not. And then if you can contribute in special teams, I think it's huge. Um, you know, we want to win on the perimeter. So I think how you play on the sidelines is critical, whether you're blocking on the sidelines, advancing the ball up the numbers as, as the ball carrier, uh, catching the ball, um, high pointing the ball, going up and getting the jump ball, I think is all, all big pieces. Um, yeah, I was just a role player, special teams guy. So, and I, I told the team that too, that was my role. And, <laughs> um, you know, so we, everybody's going to have a role on a team, but I think with, with our, our, what we're looking for, for receivers, um, guys that will block on the perimeter players that will, will go up and make the high point catch and, uh, and finish and, and go score and, 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 and be great players, you know, out on the perimeter. That's what we need here at Western Illinois. Yeah. One of the things that I think a lot of people appreciate about, appreciate about you that have observed you this first eight months is that you look at challenge as opportunities. What's the biggest challenge that you're looking forward to tackling this first season? I think it's a roster. Our biggest opportunity, I think, lies in that, you know, our roster, we went through spring ball, Kelly, in the, you know, mid fifties. <clears throat> You know, people look at that like, how do you even have spring ball? Well, the way I approached with the team, I said, guys, look at the NFL roster, active roster. You know, that's what it is. You know, that, that's how many players they have. You know, now at the college level, of course, you like to be, at, or, you know, in the hundreds, 110 is our max. But uh, that would be where the biggest opportunity lies is, is the returners that we had, that small nucleus that was here um, when I got here. So there was a, there was a, a big number of one semester players here. Um, so they were just here in the fall. They may have played for us. And then I didn't even get to meet them when I got here in December. School broke for Christmas. And so that opportunity was how we're going to build a roster. Well, we built it for the future, too. We went out and signed. Um, a lot of people probably thought it was crazy with some people <clears throat> as far as um, with how we approach some of the, the signings with high school players. But I think we want to build this thing from the ground level. And then we brought in transfers later in the process when we can identify some of those needs. But I was really excited about the group that we had that we went through spring ball with. I think that's important. Um, but that's where the opportunity lies is, is how we grow our roster from here. And then, of course, the schedule. You know, we play however many teams, you know, six teams made the playoffs in our league, as you, as you know. And then we open up here at Tennessee Martin um, coming up around the corner who, who actually made the second round of the playoffs and beat a Valley team in the first round. And so, you know, we're going we're gonna to open up with – one of the best teams in, in FCS that, that aren't in the Valley. And then we go to the Gophers, you know, get to play a big 10 team, team two. So I think that's where our opportunity lies is, is scheduling. And then again, the players, the roster, getting, getting where we need to go and growing as fast as we can. So we're ready to go, go win ball games. Yeah. And as you said, I think during media day, there's such a thin line in this league between being two and nine and, and uh, five and six, which, I mean, I can think back to last year, a game that we had for game of the week in Macomb against Illinois State. And 
uh, Western, I believe was, I think, they, I think they were down three touchdowns and come back to win that game. So like you said, it's just a couple of bounces here, a couple of bounces there in games. Yeah. And that, that's what it is in the Valley. I think, you know, in the Valley probably can watch all those games and I can, I give you eight to 12 plays where these games were decided, you know, and I've followed the Valley, you know, as closely as I could just as an alum, not knowing if I'd ever be back in Macomb or Western Illinois, but I know I, I know I got to watch that Southern Illinois Western game. What a great game. So proud to be a Leatherneck. You know, we came up just short, but um, you know, came around the situations by week, maybe a day game at Kansas Wesleyan. I was watching the game and uh, Southern Illinois, right. Second round playoff team. Um, I think that, I think they were either first or second round. Yeah. Second round. Yeah. And we took them into overtime. And so I think that's where you look at those those games and that fine line of how close you're going to be from being that playoff team to to being on the outside looking in. And <clears throat> every game's a every game's a battle for sure. Yeah, your husband to Hannah, your dad to Lottie. When you coach, you know, eighty plus young men, how have you embraced the contrast of being a girl dad? Charlotte's got a lot of big brothers. You know? <laughs> Yeah. So Charlotte's got a lot of big brothers. Got a picture here, right here, in my office that looks at me every day from of, of her. Show this one off here. She's pretty excited. And I don't uh, know if it, it will show on there, but my background. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, she's a yeah, cutie. She's, pre she's pretty excited in that one. But uh, no, just getting her out at practice and around the team um, has been fun. But uh, we, it's one thing to talk about family. I think in in this environment and being a coach. But I think you got to live it and show it. Um, you know, Coach Drury's got two daughters. Want, want them out of practice. Um, you know, with with my daughter having her out of practice and just um, you know having our families around our program, I think it's important. Um, that was important to me at Kansas Wesleyan too, because again, everybody's going to talk about family, but they need to see what that looks like. I want my program to see what that looks like, and we're going to continue to to build on that my wife hannah hendrickson works in the athletic department here too and, and oh, nice. especially yeah so she works for beth wilson okay uh, beth is our um assistant ad for academics my wife's working for her so we're we're excited to be working in athletics together again she was the head golf coach at kenis wesley and i was the oh the i didn't know that that's awesome there. Yep. So she golfed at Wichita State. And, oh, wow. Um, so she must be pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I married into a golf family. So I, I'm learning right now. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, how does that go when you guys get, when you guys play each other on the golf course? <laughs> well, I can only get out about twice a year. But I can tell yeah. you, you should be seen by about 20 strokes. <laughs> 20 to 20 holes. So it's, it's fun though. It's fun. And um, I think just growing up, my daughter around, you know, around athletics, around the games can be important, you know, for me and uh, wherever she decides to do it will be, will be great. But yeah, we want to promote that family environment in our yeah. program. How, and how old is Charlotte now? Is she yeah. over a year old, year and a half? Yeah, she's one and a half. Okay. She's one and a half. So she goes to daycare here in town and, um, you know, but we got built in babysitters. So I think she doesn't always make it to daycare. I think sometimes, you know, <laughs> grandma or grandpa they, or on either side, my wife's name is from Kansas, but they've, they make it over here some and grandma and grandpa scoop her up sometimes and they like to like to hang out with her too. So. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome that you have such great family support. If, if you went back and told your 11 year old self growing up in Macomb that one day you would be the head Western Illinois football coach, the same position your dad once held, what would young Myers have thought? Oh, that, that'd be awesome because he loved the Leathernecks. You know, that's for sure. He loved watching the Leathernecks and still does. So that, that part has been a huge part of my life and excited to keep moving forward with it. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, you know, I mean, now we're kind of technically a week from now, um, probably another hour or so you guys will be warming up for your game with, with UT Martin. So how anxious are, are you to, to get that first game under, under your belt? It's been good prep. Um, it's been really good prep. You know, after camp breaks, you know, you have that period we're going through right now. We're, now we're in game week. So it's really been the last couple of days where you're like you're, you're in that in-between period where you can get a jump start um, on your opponent. Uh, so Tuesday, um, earlier this week, we called that Head Start Tuesday. So we got a head, head start. Um, on typically you wouldn't get that many days for an opponent but we did scout yeah. forward and and got a jump start on it so we're eager for the opportunity um, you know we're traveling a, a pretty good distance 
Um, you know, I, our first week of fall camp here, at Kelly, it was really warm. Mm -hmm. And, um, the ne the next two weeks it was not. And so I'm thankful we had that first warm week and the players are too, just cause you know, we're looking, looking out here a little over, you know, right about a week now, temperature wise, it could be pretty warm there in Martin, Tennessee and 630 games. You're going to be out there 530, you know, for pregame. And, you know, we're already looking into minute by minute, you know, what we want to do to make sure that we are, you know, ready to primed and ready to go at 630 for kickoff. And so, there's a lot that goes into that, talking a lot with our strength staff. Um, John Minnis does a great job talking to him about nutrition constantly, as well as our head athletic trainer, Chad Cerullo and his staff, uh, just making sure we're watering properly, eating properly, and preparing our body the, the best we can for, for game day. But no, I'm excited. Like I said, we're going to pound the rock between now and then. So I mean, the game will, will be the game, I think. Whatever sideline you're on, whether it's, you know, Kansas Wesleyan or, you know, for the weather next thing, football is football. Yeah. And um, I think our players recognize that too, that our game can travel, our game can go wherever it needs to go if we pound the rock and work hard every day. Awesome. Uh, anything that I haven't asked you that you think we should know? Oh, just appreciate you having me on here, Kelly. Excited to, to work with you and excited about the season. Um, you know, really thankful for uh, the leadership of Patty in, in the Missouri Valley and, and saw Mike on here earlier and you and appreciate everything you do to grow our game and and promote the Missouri Valley Conference. Thanks for all that you do. Oh, you're, you're so welcome. And I look forward. I think we have, uh, I think we have you guys game of the week last weekend of October uh, there at Hanson Field. So looking forward to, to finally meeting you in person.